today on Wide World of Sports. The nation's finest stayers take centre stage at Melbourne Spring Carnival for the running of the Caulfield Cup. You'll see Doremus, nothing like a dame, Count Chivas and Hula Flight racing with an all-star field in the Blue Ribbon event. Plus a new crop of two-year-olds will be stepping out in the debutante stakes. Magic of Sydney and Ebony Grove renew their rivalry in the Norman Robinson stakes. And Boom Horse Lion Hunter goes in search of more prey in the Scalacci stakes. The Vaux Rogue stakes is a test for Toil and Monzel. Plus, you'll see the feature events from Randwick, including the Tats Cup and Handicap. Throughout the afternoon, you'll be off the turf and onto the tarmac with qualifying action from the 125, 250 and 500cc bikes for tomorrow's Australian Motorcycle Grand Prix at Eastern Creek. And we'll give you a chance on the winner's podium with our $5,000 Memorable Moments giveaway. So saddle up for a rare racing experience featuring the bikes and Australia's best thoroughbreds on Caulfield Cup day right here on the one and only wine world of sports we've got lined up for you from Caulfield it was overcast we've had a bit of rain the track is officially good but it could be downgraded a little later on. But right now, the track is good and the uh, weather forecast is for showers to clear. So let's hope that's the case. You can see some hardy uh, fans out there. They've been uh, lining up fairly early and brought along their umbrellas just in case. And uh, let me tell you, the weather has been a little bit iffy, but we are confident that things are going to get better. Welcome to another Spring Carnival edition of the show, coming to you from Trackside here on Caulfield Cup Day. And it is a very good afternoon to Max Walker, who's got a pocket full of money and a lot of winners lined up. Who have you been talking to lately? Your bank manager. <laughs> well, I hope we get a few winners today, but there's a lot of expectation out there. The track does look magnificent. I like the camber. It's been upgraded from last year. Um, it, it does look a picture. Doremus and, um, and Friedman. Can they make it, um, you know, four, 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 four out of four, five, actually? Yeah. And, and, yeah, Damien Oliver's uh, back in town and high expectations. Gay Waterhouse would love to break the duck and, and, and get a Caulfield Cup. Well, Gay will be along a little later on and Looking give us a few to tips, too, I hope. Time to have your pen and form Guy and Hadley as we consult for the experts, hopefully with some uh, winning tips, with their view on today's racing, the great all-rounder Simon O'Donnell and the Wizard of Odds, Ken Callender. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Yes, big time racing today, the Caulfield Cup. Does it get you excited, Simon? It certainly does, Wizard, and I'm, I'm even more excited standing next to you, but what a great day we're going to have. The weather's cleared. I think we're going to have a great Caulfield Cup. Enough of the compliments. I'm going to try and tip you a winner. I think it's going to be a big Sydney year this year. I think nothing like a Dane is going to win the Caulfield Cup. Now, his run in the Metropolitan Handicap, was, or it's the Metropolitan Stakes now, was absolutely sensational. When he flashed down the outside and two more bounds and he would have won. Now, I know you Melbourne people scoff at Metropolitan form. Uh, you think that the races uh, below the Melbourne Cups. Well, let me tell you that it won't be in future because it's a set weight race now. Horses like Saintly ran in the Metropolitan this year. Nothing like a Dane's run was sensational and I think you'll win the Caulfield Cup. The best roughie is Love Dance. Other horses I like on the program in race three here at Caulfield, I like uh, the Sydney Galloper, number two, King Ivor. I think he's the best bet of the day, a last start winner at Randwick. And I'm sticking with my home state in the Tristark Stakes, race five, where I like the top one, number one, Chlorophyll. What do you say, Simon? Yes, look, I think the Caulfield Cup is just going to be a great race. There's many chances. I'm going to give it a little bit of value this afternoon. I like the Phantom Chance. I think he's going to run a great race in the Caulfield Cup this afternoon. At odds, he is a good each-way chance. In race two, I like a horse by the name of Litmus. And in race five, I think Miss Margaret can get the biscuits. So they're my best three for the day, Ken. Thank you, Simon. Now, we're trying to get you a buck. One man who's certain to get a buck because he's going to ride some winners is Shane Dye. Here he is. Well, thank you, Ken. We have it all here today at Caulfield. We have the marching band just going past. We have the great horses racing here, and of course we've got the rain. I don't think it's going to affect the main chances, though, in the cup, the wet weather. Horses like Doremus, nothing like a Dane Hula flight. It might affect Count Shivers, though. He does not like it wet. At this stage, the track's good, but I think there will be a downgrade with the rain during the day. With us is, of course, the expert clerk of the course, Harry Troy. What's your comments on the big race today? Well, that's right, Sean. I think you've said it all. Should uh, these wet conditions persist, it certainly uh, enhances the prospects of the, the likes of Doremus uh, and won't affect your mount. I thought uh, I, the Bandette would come into the race fairly well with 49 and a half, a luxury weight, and perhaps Hula Flight too. She's well weighted if she can get through the softer conditions, uh, which I, I do think that'll be the, the norm later in the day. Well, that's the expert opinion of Harry Troy, but stay tuned today. See how the weather is. 
follow it and back many a winner. Good on you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Harry. Shane, uh, a couple of weeks ago, had laryngitis, but the voice is back, back. And, and is faring pretty well at this particular stage. Sharing the weekend sporting headlines with Melbourne Spring Carnival is the final round of the World Motorcycle. They straighten up, assertive last, the leader, tackled by Simply Believe, and here comes Dashing Eagle down the outside, she's joining in very quickly, coming to the 250, Dashing Eagle over on the outside has taken the lead from Simply Believe, assertive last, back behind them, Zaya finishing on with Superb Lady, followed by Day Rabay, who's now in the clear, but Dashing Eagle set for victory, Dashing Eagle too good, wins it well, Day Rabay finishing well for second, a nose away third, Zaya Superb Lady, assertive last behind Here's the thrill of a win. Owner Wolf Blast celebrates with trainer Bart Cummings after dashing Eagles' victory in Wednesday's Thousand Guineas right here at Caulfield. And that's the kind of reaction we've come to expect from our next guest. She's already enjoying an amazing spring and there's surely more to come. Good afternoon to Gay Waterhouse and Wolf Blast and yourself. That, I mean, what sort of combination would the two of you have? Well, I don't know if Bart's recovered from that bear hug, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but a good on him. I mean, that's what racing's all about, isn't it? It's, it's about having fun. I mean, these people have invested large amounts of money, Wolf has, and he got a kick out of it. Good luck to him. I, mean, I think it's part of the theatre of racing, isn't it, to see the, you know, the connections and the owners that oh. I mean, just get up there and get excited. I mean, there's just so many endless images of yourself in different outfits right throughout the past few years. I mean, it's wonderful for the game. Well, I think that people, a lot of my owners say they never realised how much enjoyment, how much excitement, how many ulcers they've had from owning horses. You know, the excitement, the waiting, and, and then, of course, it dawns the day, and I just know the people that are here today on Caulfield Cup Day. Well, as I said, a lot of expectation about today. Uh, race two, the Norman Robinson uh, Stakes. Um, this was the race that nothing like a Dane won last year, then went on to win the VRC Derby. Um, Magic of Sydney, number one in this one. Is it going to be the same sort of voyage? The Magic of Sydney? Well, he, he will. He'll hopefully win today, and I think he's quite capable of winning this race. He just lost a little bit of work going into the Spring Champion Stakes. His three weeks between runs probably got away on me a little bit, and it probably wasn't rating his best race, but he's certainly spot on for today. And I know that uh, Graham Rogerson's horse is a very good horse, but I think mine's a little bit better. Why not? That's confidence. And we'd expect nothing else. But let me look at this Caulfield Cup. It's just a fantastic field, isn't it? And, and, and just class horses. And Mark Reed, though, he says nothing's going to beat nothing like a day. And he reckons it's, it's a lay-down Missouri. He's got bets plunged all over the place. Does that put a lot of pressure on you? Well, it doesn't from the bookmaking uh, side of it because we're not a bet betting stables. But it, it certainly puts a pressure on you because you want the horse to, or horses that I have in the, the race to perform well. Uh, Nothing like a Dane's done everything right and deserves to be one of the favourites. Is it uh, the the mark horse too uh, long for it, or uh, are you happy with the uh, you know the the the, uh, the track also? Well, he's won, he ran second on a quagmire at Flemington a year ago. He uh, can handle the rain-affected going. It's not a bad track today. It's probably going to be a bit greasy. It was on Wednesday a bit slidey and slippery. And, and, uh, but it is still the horse to beat as far as you're concerned? Well, I think that Lee's horse, Doremus, he looks sensational. I've been watching him at the track the last few days. He looks great, and he's a, he's a proven performer over 2,400 plus. But my other three have got great chances. I thought the Mayor Hula Flight would be very hard to beat. You talk about a lightweight chance. You know, every time I've asked her to make that quantum leap, she's done it. And I think she's capable of doing it today. Electronic? Well, she's probably going to be in the 20, 20 25 to 1. She's a great uh, each-way chance for the punters. She's very fit, and she's ridden by Mick Dittman. And Iron Horse, um, yeah, you must be excited about the prospects there. Yes, I am, because I'm delighted that he's associated with the Variety Club of Australia, and that puts a different sort of slant on it. But I think the horse is making a big jump in class, and I do think he's capable at long odds. It's had uh, good track work. It had it, uh, you know, you were very happy about it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the track work's still good? Track work's spot on. I've been spitting and kissing them and making sure they're doing everything right. Does that mean you've been easy to get along with? Oh, I've been very easy to get along with. I'm always easy to get along with. What about Shane Dye? I mean, he must be really G'd up for this. I mean, we'd love to have a Caulfield Cup, wouldn't he? Well, look, it's, you get G'd up in a different way. I don't know if it's the same as you're going to wear. You, you, get, you do get nerves, but you're not G'd up that you can't control the situation. Shane's one of the greatest professionals I've ever worked with. And if I thought he got too G'd up on race day, I wouldn't be using him as my number one jockey. So, no, he's, he's sensible. He does get excited. As he said to me, I'd sooner ride track work than, uh, <laughs> than ride uh, in small races. I love the big time races. Now, what about um, for the punters out there, a gay Waterhouse trifecta? I mean, and, and other connections. You know? All right, I think from race two, you've got to back Magic of Sydney. And then moving on to the Caulfield Cup, I'll go for nothing like a Dane, closely followed by Hula Flight by Electronic, my horses. I'll stick with the team. Okay, going ahead a, a, a week, uh, the Cox Plate, Juggler, all set. 
Well, he just worked superbly this morning and, and Gavin Eads came in and he just, woof, he said, this horse is something special. He's done everything right. He just keeps improving. He's got to be one of the favourites for the Cox Plate next Saturday. And is West Point still in work? Mm, probably, yes. You've probably seen his best. I don't think I can get him improved him much more than he is at this moment in time. And are you going to run him next week? Don't I ever. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great next week, but today, of course, um, looking ahead to on, on Monday the 21st, uh, a lot of your fans out there will have um, some huge expectations and hoping that it's a reason to smile or well, appeal. I, I hope the AJC are some of my fans, that's the main thing. So what's, you see, you must be a little nervous, I mean, I mean getting those butterflies harnessed in a straight line, I mean, <laughs> it's an unknown quantity, isn't it, to going into a, a, an appeal like that? Oh, it is, it is, and, but I, mean, uh, I, I mean, you read, you read, You read in the press and, and, and you get different points of... You them. should know better than reading in the press, if you read... <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't tell us, so we've got to we've get got it from to somewhere. Read into it. <laughs> well, so, I read mean, it. a lot of people think it's very unfair. Well, um, look, we'll worry about that after the 21st, but uh, I must say that I'm, I'm quite the confident that things will sort out themselves out. Well, just Justice, let's hope, is seen to be had on the 21st. Gay, thank you very much. We know you've got a busy day um, and, uh, again, making time to come across to us here on Wide World of Sports. We've been talking to Gay Waterhouse. This is Nine's Wide World of Sports on Caulfield Cup Day. We'll be back with more in a moment. <laughs> Even up in the uh, stands, you're riding hands and heels. A fresh crop of two-year-old fillies ready to face the starter in race one here at Caulfield. Here's Simon and Cam with the latest totes. Yeah, thanks very much, Kenny. Simon, what about I run through the totes first, and then uh, I reckon you're, uh, you've just caught up with someone special. I look forward to do you doing that, Wizard. OK, here we go. Number one tendril, Shane Dye's mount, is out the 15 to 1. It's one of the two John Hawks runners. It'll be racing in the All Cerise. Number two, Absurd, out to uh, 7 to 2 now. Absurd races in the second set of uh, Woodland Studs colours of black with a Cerise cap. Number three, Ancona Jane, is at 66 to 1. It's out to 80 to 1. Number four, Booz O'Hara, is also out to 80 to 1. Number five, Brilliant Vixen, uh, is a hundred to one chance. Number six, Cornwall Queen, is showing right on nine to one, about nine ninety ten dollars. Number seven, Export Gold, racing in the black and white stripes, is at eight dollars forty, about seven and a half to one. And number eight, God's Wacky, uh, is at twenty five to one. Number nine, La Passion, at seven to one. Number 10, Lady Lexus, is at uh, 25 to 1. Number 11, Regencia, being the best back runner in the race, keeps firming now into $4.50 or odds of 7 to 2, 3.5 to 1. Number 12, the, the, uh, the Battered Bride, or the Bartered Bride, is at 60 to 1. Number 13, Tycoon Prince, at uh, 33 to 1, out to 40 to 1. Western Reality, number 14, is at 66 to 1. Number 15, Winning Deck, is at 25 to 1 chance. Number 16, uh, Won't Tell, who's a stable mate of the, uh, the new favourite, Regencia, is at about 8 to 1. And number 17, uh, Zingaro, is out to 30 to 1. The three emergencies were not required. Simon, tell us about this interview. Yes, just caught up with uh, John Hawkes. He's had that great season so far with his two-year-olds. Let's see what he thinks of his two hopes in race one. John, the Caulfield Cup, just the one representative donor. How do you rate the chances? Well, it's a you know, very tough cup, Simon. You know, a lot of chances in the race, but on his best behaviour, you know, I think he'd be some chance in the race. But uh, he's at big odds. But his last start was a little disappointing, but uh, he's a horse that you know can be a little hot and cold. But uh, if he performed at his best, he definitely would be in with some chance. All the best. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, pretty confident uh, John Hawks can, and uh, why wouldn't he be? He's had a, a good year with his two odds. He's two two-year-olds in this race, actually, uh, tendrils and absurd. Number one and number two, Shane Dyer's on tendrils, and Darren Gauchy is on absurd. Yes, and like all Hawks two-year-olds, they're well-educated, and both have already raced 
Tendrils uh, won a race in Adelaide at Victoria Park before finishing unplaced at Flemington. And Absurd had a run in Sydney where she showed a lot of speed before wilting a little bit in the straight. The 900 metres trip will suit her. That's uh, God's Wacky uh, on centre screen there. That uh, grey filly who obviously uh, I'd say is by, uh, I thought it was going to be by God's Walk, but it's out of a God's Walk mare. It's by Yuma Tiller. There's Regencia. Uh, pretty famous colours there, the mannerism colours, aren't they, Simon? Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, Barry and Midge Griffiths, who have owned uh, many good horses over the year, particularly fillies. And uh, this is another one that's coming through. It's by New Region out of Helford, which is a Sackford mare. And there's been a fair whisper around. And Greg Hall on board, no better jockey to have on board on a big day like this. Yeah, she uh, certainly looks apart, looks pretty forward and uh, nice, strong two-year-old. She's into 4.10 on the tote now, while the uh, second favourite, Absurd, who's drawn the 18 pence, the number one gate, the inside gate, uh, is at $4.50 on the tote. Uh, going in forward there now, number 13 from the uh, Marconi stable is Tycoon Princess. Just having a little bit of trouble with them. Well, a lot of these, or well, the majority of these horses obviously haven't raced. And even though they've uh, trialled and come out of the barrier, it's still a big occasion for them. Yeah, it certainly is a big occasion. There's crowd, colours. Um, they haven't, you know, seen something to, the, to these dimensions before. They've been on a quiet trial uh, of a of a mid-morning and not a lot of people around, not the colours that they're going to see today. So you can often get some two-year-olds playing up before they go in the barriers. You can get three, four and five-year-olds playing up too. There's really no, uh, no written ru rule about it that um, these horses can get temperamental on race day. That was a case of uh, one horse being overpowered by about eight men. <laughs> but uh, the job's done. She's in the barrier. We're just waiting for one or two more before we'll see the Australian debutante stakes, a listed race of 900 metres and uh, a very good race. It's for two-year-old fillies, all the females, and we'll see uh, which is the, going to be the early season stars. Number 15 there is Winning Deck, uh, who is, is a filly by uh, final card, a former fast sprinter who was trained by Anthony Cummings. Uh, just a couple more to go in. I see uh, the Bartered Bride is still out behind them. There she is there. Yeah, number two. The Barnard Bride, I thought, looked exceptionally well out of the Matthew Highland stable down at Cranbourne. Looked exceptionally well in the mounting yard. And Glenn Boss to ride. Barrier 20 is going to be a bit of a problem, but um, I thought it looked very forward and could run a bold race. By Marauding, a uh, son of Sir Tristram, who won the Golden Slipper, and uh, a lot of the Marauding stock come to hand very quickly and uh, are early comers. And she looked, uh, she looked a pretty mature filly for uh, uh, this stage of the year. Well, that's about the last one to come in. If we get the Varded Bride in, we'll be ready for action in the first. Don't forget the two favourites are 11 Regentia in the light blue and yellow checks with the light blue sleeves of the red cap. And Absurd, who races in the black with the cerise cap from Barrier 1. OK, they're all in. Let's go to John Russell. And Regency run the outside, was one of the first to get going. Away quickly towards the inside export goal. Absurd, a bit slow to get going. As they go past the 800 metre mark, and Regency takes up the running, a length to export goal. Won't tell along the inside, going fast, followed by Ancona Jane. Very deep there is winning deck, followed by the Bartered Bright off the track. Tycoon Princess behind them, Lady Lexus and Cornwall Queen. Absurd as well, back over on the inside of Zingaro, and they were followed by Western Reality, brilliant vixen. And a long way back in the field, are Pash on as they make the home turn. God's working second last. Booz O'Hara last of all as they straighten up. Export Gold has got clear coming down to the 200. Left two and a half lengths to winning deck. Over on the inside is Won't Tell a good long gap for Gensia being followed by Ancona Jane. Absurd coming from a long way back running on pretty well but Export Gold is well clear. 100 to go. Absurd is flying home down the outside. It will be too late. Export Gold is well clear in the run home and Export Gold wins it nicely. About two and a half lengths to Absurd a good run. Third winning deck followed by Won't Tell and Tendrils who made up ground. Next time is God's Wacky, further back in the field, Regencia, followed by Western Reality, La Passion, and they were followed next time by Cornwall Queen, a good long gap, Tycoon Princess, followed by Lady Lexus Zingaro, well back in Kona Jane, Booz O'Hara, followed by the Bartered Bride, and last time is Brilliant Vixen. Well, number seven, Export Gold, never gave anything a look in, and she's paid $8.80 and $2.70. Number two, Absurd, got a long way back early, probably a good thing beaten, has paid $1.90, and number 15, Winning Deck will be third, will pay 750 one of the roughies of the field let's pick up the replay you'll see the export gold is well clear and here absurd who is probably running about 10th 
at one stage after showing a lot of speed in her only Sydney start uh, had got into second place and she made it home after the leader but the bird had flown and that was the end of the section Simon. Yes uh, interesting picture there look how well spread out those two year olds are they're just learning their trade uh, you'll see them racing with plenty of room a little greenly you don't see that that often with the older horses you'll see here there's plenty of room in between them they're nowhere near crushing each other they're uh, giving themselves plenty of space. The jockeys are giving them plenty of space as well. But That's the it. winner, you can't take anything away from it. Export gold, very well ridden in front by Eddie Kassar. A good effort. Yeah, I thought that was a uh, pretty good uh, uh, vision of his style there. The young boy, uh, he kept it going. Uh, she was never really in danger of defeat. She outsped them early. And even though uh, Absurd has probably got a hard luck tail, there was quite a decisive margin at the finish. The time was 53.07. Uh, not fabulous, but considering the rain, I suppose it's about what uh, could have been expected. Uh, there's the winner coming back to scale, Export Gold, for young Eddie Kassar, trained by Ray Lawson at Flemington. And uh, as we watch her, let's take our first break from racing today from Caulfield on this special edition of the Wide World of Sports. Welcome back to the running of the 119th Caulfield Cup, $1 million. Fantastic uh, situation out here. Horses looking at picture, the track rated good, maybe downgraded. Let's have a look at the divvies for Caulfield. Race one, number seven, two and 15 you wanted, seven paid 880 and 270. $1.90 for second place and in third place, winning deck paid $7.50 Victorian dividends. Okay, while you're collecting your win... <coughs> like a little bit of racing from the war era. There's a million dollars at stake in today's Caulfield Cup. The good news for Wide World of Sports viewers that you could uh, grab a slice of the prize money in our $5,000 memorable moments. Cool, and hopefully you'll make some money when we draw the prize later on this afternoon. Now, we all dream of buying a racehorse for a song and suddenly finding ourselves in the winner's circle next to the rich and famous. But for most of us, the dream remains just that. Then there are those like Helen Dalton who are in the business of making such dreams come true. For this girl from the bush, there's nothing like a bit of common sense and a horse who knows where the winning post is. Michael Maher takes up the story. When you're down on your luck and you think the fun's gone out of racing, what you need is a shot of adrenaline. Short of that, you need a few moments with Helen Dalton. No matter where they're racing, for Helen, it doesn't get any better than first past the post. Nothing is as good as a horse that puts his nose in front first. <laughs> no, you're very easy, aren't it? That includes all the other things that happen in your life, all getting married and having babies and graduating from universities, all the other high points in your life. But when that horse puts that nose in front of that post, <laughs> you got There's no nothing idea. Nothing there, there is nothing like a day. There is nothing like a day. Nothing in the world. This is a very, very, very good horse. We haven't seen the best of him yet. And to have something with as much potential as nothing like a Dane, candidly even frightens me. You could say that Helen Dalton is just a little infatuated with this horse. A bush girl who's bred and broken in horses herself, it's all been an adventure from the time she gave the horse a name. He's by Dane Hill out of Lyca Pretender, Lyca as in cameras, L-E-I-C-A. We went through every hill in Denmark, there are none. Denmark is as flat as a pancake. We went through all the Danish pretenders, all the politicians and film stars, people who pretend for a living. There were none of those whose names we could get that, went, that we could get registered. We went through hundreds of names. 
And one night, in the wee dark hours, my brother rang me up from the bush and he said, there's nothing like a Dane. Oh, what a ripper. <laughs> it's a marvellous name. From Mullion Creek near Orange in New South Wales, Central West, Helen is a monument to common sense. When her husband Tom died nine years ago, Helen set about raising two children and retraining herself, teaching and collecting degrees in business and industrial relations. Four years ago, she stunned her family and bought a coal mine. You bought a what? <laughs> and I said, well, we've bought a coal mine. Mum, other people's mothers buy a boutique or they buy a coffee shop. But God almighty, Mum, come on! How much influence do you have over Shane Dye? Like a million dollars. Nice to appear for the horses. <laughs> Does he listen to you? He better I kick him off the bum. <laughs> Does he listen I'm to you? I'm bigger than him. Business and sport is a fusion of animal and mineral with Scottish-born John Hodge, responsible for nothing like a Dane's tartan silks, Helen is partner in three coal mines and a string of horses. The biggest gamble in any business is in coal mining. The biggest gamble... What's a nice way any... to lose money if you don't do it right? If you hey, don't you do don't it right, lose you... Money? Well, you we deserve bought, to lose we money. We bought three coal mines and each one lost something like five million a year for the previous five years to be bought them and made money on them. And it, it proves like Tommy Smith or Gay taking over a horse that's been running with somebody else and hasn't been doing well, but it's got potential. And that's what we do with coal mines. In the straight, 300 out. The penny tackled by nothing like a Dane. Saintly gets the inside run and he's darted through now. And Saintly left them standing. Look at this turn of foot. Saintly put three lengths on nothing like a Dane. Donar charging home late, but it's all Saintly in the hill stakes. But Observe Helen watching her horse and the passion is obvious. Whenever the horse finishes second, this time behind Saintly, it hurts. Second in the hill stakes, who's, who's complaining? Not me. I got my eyes on bigger fish. <laughs> the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> you said it, not me. He's had a lovely run. <laughs> 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 I don't know what yeah, he just needs yeah. Nothing like a Dane has only been racing a little over a year and in his first season nearly brought off the Victoria Derby Melbourne Cup double, achieved last by Skipton in 1941. Nothing like a day in a second, then Coachwood, Quick Ransom and Vintage Crop are starting to fly home, but Doremus is clear in the final stages. He's there are some who say the task was asking too much too soon. They weren't as good a judge as Tommy Smith, were they? Tommy Smith is a very good judge of a horse, very, very good. Is there plenty left in this horse, though? Plenty. Oh. He's only four! The Melbourne Cup is the big race this year. Oh, gosh. There's no other race. That's it. Have we seen the best of this horse yet? Not, or not? yet. Not yet. Just wait. You too learn to be patient, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so there, Michael. She's a real dag, but, oh, boy, that is real Australia. Yeah, real ticker stuff, and um, I mean, she's got a great attitude, and, and you can see whether she's down or she's up. I hope she does go on to bigger and better things. Be a good person to be around, always positive, no matter when the uh, dark times run, I, I would imagine anyway. You'll see Helen's horse take on his staying rivals when we bring you our big live coverage of the Caulfield Cup later this afternoon on Wide World of Sports.
different faces of the sport of kings welcome back to the caulfield racetrack big crowd in good conditions here around about 17 18 uh, degrees track uh, good maybe downgraded a little bit few umbrellas up there but certainly a lot of expectation a lot of excitement will they go home